Welcome to Jefferson Patterson Park and Museum. And I'm Betty Seifert, uh, curator here. I've been working here for a long time, and I have taught many weaving classes to young children who come for Children's Day. So I thought I would give an introduction to some of the looms that we've used and some that you can make for yourself at home and continue to weave and learn something new about the fabrics that you wear. So, over here to my right, we have several different kinds of looms, as you can see. And not a mechanical room. Now, weaving has been around since ancient times, millennia. And it started out just very, very basic with some threads, which we call the warp threads on the looms. They're the ones that go back and forth. And then weft threads, which go across. And weft threads can be woven in all kinds of different combinations. So today, we depend on computers to do our weaving for us. They drive the machines, the looms, which are huge machines, and they also control how the threads are maneuvered so that you can get very fancy patterns easily, whereas when you're doing it yourself, it's a little more difficult. Okay, So we're going to start out very basic with what's called a plain weave or a tabby, and that is where you weave in and out of every other thread. So like you pick up one thread and you just keep going over and under each thread. And this has got a lot of threads in it because I wanted to show you the difference between how the fabric you get when you'd go close together with the threads or far apart with the threads. These are much more close. So you could get a nice little scarf out of this and put on a lot of extra warp so it would be long enough for a scarf. And um, as you can see, it takes a little, it's tedious because we don't have a machine picking it up for us. <laughs> and then, voila. Now, if you used a thread like this, which is what I'm using over here on this one, you would get something much, oops. <laughs> better. You can see it. And then when you go and pick up the opposite threads, like this, when they're closer together, it's harder and slower to do. I'm going to show you some that are much easier, but I thought I would give you a little hint as to how important set is, which is the spacing of your warp and weft threads in the room. This is still going, <laughs> it, as I say, tedious. But the end product is always much nicer than you ever would think it would be. And I'm just going to take some of this off. Um, there's a thing that you can do, which is called make a butterfly. <laughs> Isn't that a beautiful name? And it's where you take some yarn and you wind it around two fingers and then two more fingers. You're putting a cross in between, just like that, and that keeps the threads in order so it doesn't make a big knot, which is a good thing. I hate to have to deal with knots when I'm weaving, <laughs> and um, it makes it very even more tedious. But I don't consider weaving tedious really because I really love to do it. Um, but I know that watching somebody do this can seem like, oh, they're never going to finish that thing. No, they're not. <laughs> but I have over many things, and um, I do finish eventually. So here's, whoops, see, put it back through. But that's putting the butterfly through. And you notice I can get it through much faster by making it into a little butterfly. And then when you push it down, I'm going to pick up another thread so it'll make it more um, visible and show you. And then we'll move on to another one. This is 
But this one I thought would give you a little bit of a hint of all the kinds of things that you can make. And especially if you want to make a nice scarf for someone for Christmas or their birthday or something, this is one way to do it. As I say, it takes time. And you, uh, you will expend a lot of time in weaving if you want to do it and create something really beautiful. I was just going to show you how when you put them down and you get them closer, this is much closer and it'll make a pretty scarf. When you wash it, it'll pull together and it'll make a real nice fabric. This is called plain weave. Like I told you, your sheet is a little more plain weave, but these are also plain weave. Now this is another one that's going to be plain weave. And this one, you can see the spacing is much wider. And when you do this one, what will happen is that, and it's a little easier because it's quick, spaced further apart. And Just like so. And then we go back. So. And what is really fun is to have something when you get through that you've made yourself. And I think I'm going to sit there. There we go. No, I didn't. This is confusing. Okay, now if you do a bunch of these and push them real close together, they will eventually cover the whole warp. I do have a sample of something that is woven um, similar to this. You can see it makes a nice heavy fabric when you push them down together and it will be easy to um, walk on and sturdy. Over here, I didn't make it myself, I used it just to show people. Um, it's using a small loom like this to make the tapestry. And that is so much fun. I started a thing here with marking a cardboard to put a, um, threads on it. And I was going to draw a picture behind it and then weave it. I've done that before. And it is such fun because you can make small um, little uh, patterns that are beautiful to decorate your wall or a pillow or something. Like here, it's a different way. You notice on that loom there, the warp, because you have screws that will allow the front and the back to turn so you can weave, and then when you get ready to move it, you can roll it and then tighten the screws down. These two are examples of different ways of doing that um, to make something a little bit longer. This one, it has Velcro on both the ends, and what you can do is lay out threads that um, in any kind, I don't know this is because it's so pretty. <laughs> I have to use something pretty. And you can just put out a, a length of thread like this and Velcro will hold it, which is the nice thing about Velcro. And you can put a little fringe on it so that you can move it up to the edge if you want to. And you can make it as, as I say, make the set as close or as far apart as you want to. And then you can weave it. Setting up a loom just takes a little bit of planning. You can get all kinds of variables from using the different looms. This one right here will give you a long thing. Same thing, it's set up differently. As you can see, it's added as a dimension. You can create, instead of using a ruler to go across, you tie this to one end. I can do that. Just like this. There's some tension on it. So you can see 
you can put the yarn through here, and then you can do this and put the yarn through down there. And you get the same effect as of using the ruler and going across one at a time. And so this is a, the next kind of a step up in the evolution of weaving is making plain weave that you can automatically uh, raise or lower the thread, set of threads. And the next step after that was to control more than one set of threads. And right here, we have a little called Structo Loom. It's a very old one. I have several of these that I teach with. And basically, you can have what are called four harnesses. These right here. And each of those has heddles on it. And each heddle has an eye. And these, you thread them, and you thread them in a pattern so that when you weave and raise harnesses, you raise a certain set of threads. See, like this is raising two. I put up down two and I raise two. And if I did the opposite, it would give me um, the uh, reverse of the what that is there. This is just a demo piece, so it doesn't It'll make it easier for you to see. I'll do this. But you can see that it's on alternate twos. So I raise two and I lower two. Now, if I did it every other one, it'll make it with a different kind of set. I'm going to do that for the moment. And this is called the beater. It's also what spaces the threads to the e very evenly. And then we're going to put this back. So now you can see that they're alternate, but look at how different they look. If you look at them, well, let's put some across it so that you can see it better. But see, it's entirely different. It's um, very fine. And whereas here, you had a much more distinct pattern. And if you're planning to need something with um, uh, triangles and things like this here, these with little patterns in them, you usually draw them on a graph paper. And then you also plot out how you want them to go so that when they are woven, they make patterns like this down here. This, um, and it's all controlled by how you, what is called drawing it in, putting it on the loom in the arrangement of the heavens, and then how you, the order in which you need them. So you can do very complex things even on a four harness loom like this. Then when you get to eight harnesses, which this weave is designed for, you get even more complicated. And this is more of an eight harness pattern. So <laughs> there's so many different ways that you can weave and set up the looms and do it yourself, as opposed to um, buying it from somewhere else. You really learn to do something very clever and pretty and surprise somebody you love. I wanted to show you a few books that might help you with what you're doing. This is one, just making cardboard looms, as I was starting to show you over there. And you can make them in any shape. That's what's really fun about it. You know, you can do anything. And here, I love this, the title, Free Weaving. It shows you how to go about putting them in any shape, on any structure, somewhere, you know. So 
That's a cool one. I like the title. Readings that sings. And it's just variations on patterns like this. And that's what I'm gonna set that cardboard up is to weave something like this, draw my own picture and have a nice uh, pattern, which uh, will be more like a mural or a, you know, a piece of art. So that's a fun thing to do. This, just simple diagrams and explanations of different kinds of weaving. And this shows you the plain weave, like I was showing you right there in various, various forms. And it's, it's a nice little book to have, and it shows you how to set up the works in different kinds of ways. It's a nice book, and it shows you how to do a draft. So, simple little book. You can put it in a little bag and carry it with you. A little encyclopedia of weaving terms. I've used a lot of terms today. You'll probably want to wonder what they were at the end of the time. Anyway, those are some of the few books that I've had. And uh, this is that was from a library throw. Away. Here we go. Um, I think that's it for today. And I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned, go out and get some yarn and learn to 